In the near future, wildfires and drought begin to spread around the world. Soon, scientists announce an impending disaster known as the solar crisis, predicting that at the current rate the sun is expanding, it will engulf Earth in 100 years, and in 300 in years, the solar system will cease to exist. The United Earth Government, or UWIG, decide to move forward with the Moving Mountains Project, building the giant engine that will push Earth out of the solar system. Due to the high cost of operation consuming resources at a rapid rate, riots and protests occur around the world by people who do not care about tragedies that are yet to happen. The violent protest turns even worse when the UA bans the Digital Life Project, or DLPA, a radical group that believes humanity's future lies in computers. They are developing a program that will allow a person to upload their mind to a disk, but they lack the resources to go any further, so they are constantly hacking and launching terrorist attacks on UA. After another failed attempt by DLP, UA notices that people are losing faith in their project and considers stopping it. However, the Chinese ambassador Zhou convinced everyone to continue with the first part of the project, which would be completed soon and would help boost morale. The first plan is to test the engine on the moon as they plan to push it too so that the Earth can break away from its gravity. Several people are being trained as astronauts for this task, and one of them is Lu, a pilot who finds the base surrounded by protesters. The guards try to keep the angry mob at bay, but one of the protesters manages to sneak in. Luckily, Apprentice Han quickly downplays the man, which impresses Lu so much that he can already envision a future with him. While the guards use force to get rid of the protesters, the new trainees are given a tour of the place and sent to the space elevator for their first test. This elevator is the tallest structure in human history and gives cadets a taste of what it's like to be in space. It goes up so fast that many of them faint and cannot see the station that is being built there for the project. From then on, all cadets are kept busy training in all matters of subjects such as hand-to-hand -hand combat, use of firearms, and frequent trips on the elevator until they no longer pass out. They are also medically tested and exercised to ensure they are in peak physical condition. While training together, Lu and Han get to know each other and they fall in love. One day, Lu bribes the guards with cigarettes so they allow him to bring a bouquet inside the base and he gives it to Han the next time they go into the elevator. That morning, a new batch of reserve astronauts arrives and joins the elevator journey. Suddenly all the drones outside start flying out of the hangar and the engineers learn that the system has been hacked. The elevator starts up ahead of schedule and the new astronauts change clothes, revealing that they are wearing uniforms with cadet names on them, which Lu and Han observe. Outside, the drones open fire and everyone in the base must focus on defending the base from their own onslaught. The pilots try to use the planes to shoot, but the system will not target the drones as they are identified as allies. The drones take advantage of this and shoot one of the missiles down the elevator. In the elevator, the novices begin locking doors and chairs before stealing D from the cadets, beating anyone who dares to protest. In another room, Lu leaves his chair and uses his glasses to make the sun burn out the lock screen, causing the door to open. After checking on a bloodied friend, Lu goes after the terrorists, fighting them until one of them falls to his death over the edge. Lu goes after the other person who put out the fire, but it is too late, thanks for the stolen it. The terrorists use the elevator up to the station at the same time as the drones deliver a missile to them. Meanwhile, the base's scientists bring 550C, an intelligent quantum computer that eventually overrides the hacking. Drones begin to fall to the ground and explode everywhere while the elevator is pulled back down. Zero G causes Lu to shake everyone up, Lu is still fighting the terrorist, so Han opens a window grabs a mechanical arm to help break in and knock Lu out. Get the boy out okay, so she happily asks for her flowers again. Unfortunately, the man managed to press the detonator before falling unconscious, and now the station is collapsing at the base, causing irreparable damage to the building and many cadets. Although Lo jumps over it to escape Han, the base is evacuated. During the following weeks, riots and terrorist attacks turn worse as the station crashes due to all the deaths and resources lost, and people begin demanding the government to bring back the DLP. Joe asks his assistant to read a speech he has prepared, asking UA to have faith in the project, while he negotiates with the US ambassador to persuade them to give him a chance. A few weeks later, cryo sleeping pods are sent to the moon with a crew that wakes up to work on the lunar engines. Computer engineer Hang Yu goes to check his things to make sure they're okay. It includes a recording of the AI 550A and his daughter Yaya interacting with him in a very limited way due to the 550A's limitations. It is revealed that Hang Yu used to work for DLP, and has now accepted to work on the lunar project to gain access to 550C, which will control the entire base as he thinks he can use it. Key clips, which only last a few seconds, evolve into full AI of his dead daughter's mind. While working with the rest of the team, Hang Yu learns that computer researcher Zhao is in charge of the 550C and wants him to work with him on the system's operation. Hang Yu and Zhao conduct their first test of the 550C by activating each area of the base while they wait for the computer to do its job. Zhao gives Hang Yu the digital copy of his mind that was confiscated by the company when they ban the DLP and tells him it is up to him whether he wants to destroy it or not. Some time later, Hang Yu shows Yaya's clip to Zhao while he recalls the day of the tragedy. He was driving with his wife and daughter, but in a moment of distraction, wait didn't you see a truck coming into the car and crashed into it. His wife died instantly, but Yaya still had minutes to live. So Hang Yu took her to the DLP to back up her mind. The organization didn't want to help because the technology wasn't ready yet, but Zhao, 
who worked there, agreed to do the favor. In the present, Hang Yi tells Zhao to use the 550C on Yaya, but Zhao is against the idea and reminds Hang that giving him the 550A was already enough. Sometime later, the system detects an incoming level Z9 solar storm. The crew all have to head back to base, but they worry their vehicles won't be fast enough. The crew push the engines to the extreme and manage to enter the base just before the solar storm hits, but unfortunately, the 550C is trapped in the process. The project requires AI to launch in three days, so Hang Yu offers the 558 to be placed on the team developing a future 550 model. Zhao accepts and Hang Yu takes Yaya's mind on a disc before handing it over to I3. After a few days the team tests the engines and after a few seconds of tension, they are delighted to see the moon undergo an angular displacement. Small but real. And this proves that in 20 years they can be completely pushed away. And this success restores faith in the project to people all over the earth. A few months later, they test the engine again, this time on earth. At first, all the screens go black and people think it has failed, but suddenly they feel the ground shaking and a bright beam can be seen coming from the astronaut base. UA scientists confirm that Earth has undergone angular displacement, and people around the world celebrate that soon they will be able to move Earth in its entirety. Several years pass as UA continues to work on finishing the more powerful engines that will do full push-in. The Moving Mountains project has been renamed Wandering Earth. Most of the buildings are being constructed by prescribed 550C, which is also developing at an excellent pace. Every year there is a new test which continues to prove his theories correct and the citizens accept the project to the point where the DLP disappears altogether. However, there is also talk about how not everyone will be allowed into the underground cities being built now, and the requirements to obtain a pass are quite discriminatory. As Earth's rotation slows more and more each year, society switches to a 60-hour system, and the global internet shuts down. All kinds of meteorological disasters, such as floods and solar radiation, soon hit the planet, which causes an increase in cancer cases. Lo and Han marry and eventually, they have a child who would become the protagonist of the first film. They are very worried as it will be difficult for their son to get a pass to the underground cities. And to make matters worse, Han also gets cancer from the solar radiation. Hang Yu never stops working on Yaya, helping with the development of the new 550, named the 550 Watt, 14 years after the station's collapse. And Lu, now with the rank of Major, goes to an interview to be one of the sailors that will be sent to New York. The interviewer is 550 Watt, who finds Lu's skills impressive, but he is also aware of his family troubles and thinks it is more appropriate for Lu to stay on Earth and take care of them. Lo admits that he is sorry to leave his family behind, but being selected for the base is the only way to send his son to the underground city through a preferential policy. On the other side of the mirror, the scientist in charge of the project is also listening to all the interviews and stays put. Hearing Lu talk so passionately about his son, you can't help thinking about his own daughter. Then 550 Watts explains that Han's life will soon end, causing Lu to have a breakdown and fail the stress test. Later, Lu goes to the hospital to spend time with Han as her condition has worsened to the point that she can no longer stay at home. Han admitted that she wanted to see her hometown one last time, which could be difficult due to the current weather problems later in the evening. Driven by Lo's obsession, Hang Yu sneaks into the base and connects Yaya's mind to the 550 Watt. This time, Yaya has infinite reactions to him and can tell that he is somewhere else, which makes Hang Yu cry. At that moment, a group of guards accompanied by Zhao try to see Hang Yu, reason and accept Yaya is dead. Hang Yu refuses and fully uploads Yaya to 550 watts, which immediately triggers problems in the moon system and the engines begin to fail. The guard hangs onto you and takes him away while Zhao puts Yaya back on the disc and shuts down this 550 watt extension. Meanwhile, Lo pulls some strings through old friends and borrows a jet to take his family to Han's hometown. After doing some pirating for fun, they land in Shanghai, which is now a frozen wasteland. As they gaze at the stars, Han asks Lu if, when the time comes, she wants to die with dignity, not with a bunch of wires and pipes attached to her. At EU Egg, they discuss the system problem caused by Hang Yu and observe that it is similar to the hacking they did with the drone in the elevator years ago. They're trying to override the system with 550 watts, but somehow they're getting blocked. Suddenly the moon's engines exceed their power limits and explode, causing the moon to lose a good portion of its land mass. This explosion also starts pushing the moon towards the Earth. When this happens Joe is near the ocean and sends an emergency alert to all world leaders as he sees that tsunami grow in size and hit land. Due to this emergency, Lu receives a message calling him back to duty and the leaders already begin opening the underground cities to let people in, as the tide will turn worse from now on. Before Lu leaves for his mission, Han dies peacefully in his sleep and their son is taken to the underground city by Han's father. Meanwhile, Joe sneaks into UA and asks for their support for his emergency plan. He wants to use all of Earth's nuclear weapons on the moon to trigger its implosion and avoid a collision. No government has ever disclosed how many nuclear weapons it has in its arsenal because it's secretive, but for the first time in history, it doesn't matter, and everyone is ready to hand over whatever they have to help. Agrees too. Meanwhile, Xiao visits Hang Yu in prison to tell him that they will activate Earth's engines earlier than expected, so they need to reactivate the global internet to allow for coordinated detonation control. One of the servers is now underwater, and Xiao wants to hang you so to convince him you care shows him that he still has the disc with you and hangs your mind. 
because lunar debris has formed an asteroid belt around the moon, the best pilots are selected to take them to Earth, including Lu. Three teams are dispatched to look after the missing internet servers, which are in Beijing, Tokyo, and Dulles. Lu explains to everyone how to use the key to decode the password, which consists of 30,000 random numbers. Then the 550 watts will do the rest. Meanwhile, the shuttles take off for the moon with the pilots selected. Asteroids move fast and appear out of nowhere, so they end up hitting some shuttles and causing them to crash. This causes the team to lose 200 weapons, with only 180 surviving to detonate. The shuttle is guided safely through the moon's surface by 550 watts, at least until another asteroid hits another shuttle and causes the others, including Lu, to crash, killing them violently, literally forces it to the ground. In the end, they lose 384 warheads. The survivors immediately look for tape to fix their helmets to maintain oxygen and to bandage any wounds. Then they decide that they will distribute the remaining weapons on foot. Lu doesn't want the youth to die so soon. So he leaves the shuttle and closes the door, accepting to sacrifice himself for their sake before sending the shuttle back to Earth with all the survivors. The three teams arrive at the server locations and go through the water. Dives down, spotting all kinds of marine life firsthand. Making their lives there. With the help of drones and special equipment, the Hang Yue team in Beijing enters the building and finds the door to the server. But when they try to force open the door, the equipment cannot handle the pressure and malfunctions, sustaining severe injuries. Looks like one of the men. Zhao tries to take care of the wounds, but does not have the necessary equipment and the man dies. While most of the team takes the body hangs away, Yu and Zhao decide to go ahead and complete the mission, making all the necessary connections to bring the internet back up, while Lu takes a truck to move the remaining weapons. Suddenly, lunar debris begins falling to Earth, blocking a backup team's way of reaching the Beijing server. When the debris hits, the building starts to shake and some hardware falls on Zhao's leg, trapping him. Room starts to fill with water and hangs. You can't open the door even with the help of his drone, so Zhao decides to give him the key to the password before the water overwhelms him and he dies. Lunar debris begins to destroy all major locations on Earth and those who have been peacefully moving to underground cities, now jostling and panicking on the EU egg, receive bad news. They don't have enough time to coordinate all the weapons to detonate at the same time because they are all different models. Joe is about to lose hope, but one of his men offers an alternate solution. They could have sent more astronauts and detonated them manually, meaning they would have been acceptable to sacrifice. 300 people are needed for the operation, and some youth volunteers. But this action is interrupted by an older pilot who explains that it is his duty to do so and leave the young people to take care of the future. 50 agree and immediately board all astronauts who are over 50 agree and immediately board the shuttle to fly to the moon. Lou is shocked to see them arrive, but his communicator is broken, so he cannot say goodbye to his old teacher and training partners before he is put on a shuttle to return to Earth. UA confirms Tokyo and Dulles servers are back online, but not Beijing. Hang you are having trouble as water is filling in his room as well and he is not able to connect the key to the correct computer. Desperate for a solution, he connects the mind disk to the computer. At the same time, the astronauts on the moon all detonate nuclear weapons. Moon successfully explodes and a collision is avoided. However, more debris is coming. Earth needs to go soon. Hang Yu activates the yes or key clip and tries to ask her to activate the internet from inside by showing the key. But at that very moment the water finally covers him and he too dies. Lunar debris continues to fall all over the world and the WOG sends out an emergency message stating that the mission has failed. Thus riots and stampedes start taking place in big cities. However, Xiao realizes that all hope is not lost and tells his team to start the countdown to fire the engines. Everyone thinks he is crazy, but Hang Yu's mind in Beijing suddenly becomes active even inside the computer. After reuniting with his daughter, Hang Yue gets down to the AI business and works to activate the server. At the same time, a man obeys Xiao's order and presses the button. Everyone on base watches in awe as Earth is pushed out of the way of the lunar debris and people around the world celebrate while the tides finally calm down. Lo sees the Earth moving from his position in the shuttle and takes the chance to record a beautiful video to send to his son. Meanwhile, Hang Yue and Yaya's mind becomes one with the backup 550 watt. Seven years later, as the Earth wanders, it regains its 24-hour system. Joe has retired, but his assistant is carrying on his legacy at UA. Now that the lunar crisis is over, they begin the second part of the plan, which will fly by Jupiter in 10 years to provide a second boost that will knock Earth out of the solar system for good. A space station has been put in place to monitor the engines and Lu is in charge of it. The system is managed by 550 watts, but the AI decides it's not easy to say and turns the word into Formos. Inside the AI hang you learn that it was Moss who destroyed the lunar engines and did most of the terrorist attacks like the elevator and the drone takeover. After seeing Yaya in the maze, Moss comes to the conclusion that the best way to preserve human civilization is to destroy the human race, confirming that it is the same Moss from the first film who went through all the troubles under this philosophy. If you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notification, so you can see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.